so in this lecture we will use all the rules and uh, whatever we have learned so far to take an example and see if we can write a character table from scratch okay so let us take an example x e f 4 and see what all we know so far whatever we have learned in this course and can we write a character table for this particular molecule so i'm not telling you as of now what is the point group what are the symmetry elements or symmetry operations present so let us do it from scratch okay so the structure of the molecule is square planar so if i try to write down so it looks like this now we have learned how to orient this molecule along the axis right so let us because for unit vector transformations it will be important to orient the molecules along the axis so you have x y z and you have x e along the center with let me use different color two xcf bonds along x axis and two xcf bond along y axis right that is y and minus y xcf right so now we should be able to comfortably tell where all the symmetry elements are present right so let's see so now let us try to list down all the symmetry elements and then corresponding operations so we'll first write down the elements here so this particular example will revise everything what we have learned and we'll be able to write down the character table so i'm taking this example because this is highly symmetric so we can also take octahedral example which will be more symmetric than this but then that will take a lot of time in calculation so i have picked up a reasonable example where the order of the group is high so that we know a lot of elements here okay so let's start with e then you have c4 axis which is lying along z right collinear c2 axis which is also along z then you have uh, let's call it as c2 prime which will be lying along f x e f which is along x axis so this is basically a c2 prime which is lying along x axis then you have c2 double prime let's call it as which is lying along x and y axis now what else do we have in this we have inversion right inversion center is there so you have f x e f everything is getting inverted here if i will be lying along x e right then what else do we have we will have s4 so s4 will be collinear with c4 and we have a sigma h over here we also have s2 but s2 is basically i so we don't write s2 here and there is no s3 or c3 because this is uh, containing four atoms of fluorine which are separated by 90 degree each so there is no c3 in this okay then what else we have sigma h is the molecular plane which is lying along the x y plane then we have sigma v which will be lying along there will be two sigma v's right which will be lying along uh, xz plane and yz plane right then we have two sigma d's which will be bisecting the x y axis and containing the z axis right so it will be something like this right and similarly we have another sigma d which will be bisecting x and minus y right so something like this right okay so now that we have listed all the symmetry elements i'm not calling it as group elements now let's look at the symmetry operations present in this 
So E will give you one operation, C4 will give you two operations, C4 and C4 cube, uh, because C4 square will be C2. C2 will generate only one operation because C2 power 2 will be E. So this C2 prime, there are actually two C2 primes and two C2 double primes, right? This two C2 primes will be one along x axis, one along y axis, and the C2 double primes will be in between x y axis and in between x y axis, like this, right? So along the sigma d's, basically, this will be along the sigma d's, okay? So this will be generating the similar number of operations C2 prime, two C2 double prime. I generates only one operation, S4 will generate how many operations? Now, so S4 will generate two operations, right? Sigma will generate one. Each sigma v will generate one. So there are two sigma v, so two sigma v operations and two sigma d operations. So this tells me that the order of the group H. Let us count all the symmetry operations. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So H is 16 here. Okay. And I'm not going to do all the class calculations, but we will just see here number of classes. So we have 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 classes. So we have order of the group, we have number of classes. Now let us also see what will be the point group here. So point group will be because there is one C4 axis which is principal axis and we have 4 C2 axis. So there is a CN axis and N C2 is perpendicular to CN, right? So we have a C4 and 4 C2 is perpendicular to C4. This will be falling into D4 point group. And because there is a sigma H present, that takes us to D4 H, right? So point group S calculation is very simple. So D4 H point group. Okay, so now that we have determined what are the symmetry operations present, order of the group, number of classes, D4H point group, let us see if we can write down the character table using this information. Let's go to writing character table. So we have listed all of them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? Okay. So since there are 10 classes, so there has to be 10 irreducible representations, right? So we have tau 3, tau 4, tau 5, tau 6, tau 7, tau 8. Tau 9, tau 10. Okay. Now, the first rule which says that the summation li square is equal to h, right? So that tells you that l1 square plus l2 square plus L10 square should be equal to 16, right? Okay. So, because these are dimensions, uh, so character under E will take the value as L1. So, this cannot be negative or fraction. It has to be a real number or it has to be a natural number. So, 0 is also not an option. So, starting from 1 and above, okay. So now if we take all one, let's say, 
so we will get one square plus one square so that gives me 10 right so that does not give me 16 so that means at least one of this will have two dimensional representation so if i take two here that gives me 9 plus 4 which will be 13 right so if i do this then i get 13 so if i add one more two then then i have 8 plus 8 which gives me 16 so i can say that there are eight one dimensional representations and two two dimensional representations right so very clearly i can write one characters for character under e right so this is two and two right okay now also i know that summation over all r i i r square is also equal to h right which is 16 so that means for any given representation if i take the sum of squares under characters of different symmetry operations i should get 16 right okay and this would also be multiplied with the class sizes so this would mean that if i say this that okay let's say this is a b c d e f g h i okay let's go to second page next page so this gives me one square plus two into a square plus b square let me just write down the corresponding symmetry operation so that we know what are the class sizes here c2 2c2 prime 2c2 double prime i 2s4 sigma h 2 sigma v 2 sigma t plus 2 c square plus 2 b square plus e square plus 2 f square plus g square plus 2 h square plus 2 i square right this should be equal to 16 okay so now if you see that if i put all of them as 1 so do i get the value 16 let us see that so this gives me 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 so i get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so i do get 16 so that means one of the solution is all of them can be one right so i will just erase this and i will substitute it with one all ones is one of the solution now let us go to next solution so the values here can be positive or negative one right because negative one would also give me 16 now what all negatives it can take it can take half of them should be negative half of them should be positive why i say that because i can say that tau 1 tau 2 would go to zero if half of the products will be positive half of the products will be negative and then we also have to factor in the class sizes here okay so for example if i'm making a as negative so that would mean my this 2 is uh, becoming so i have to have two other values as negative right so if i for example if i have a as minus 1 
then I have to have at least two positives to counter the negative of uh, A as positive values. So, for example, then B and E has to be positive so that the overall tau1 dot tau2 equal to 0. So, if I let's take the tau1 dot tau2 equal to 0 condition and see how does it, what do I mean? Okay, now again let's see tau1 dot tau2 condition is 1 dot 1 plus 1 dot 2 dot a plus 1 dot 1 dot b plus 1 dot 2 dot c plus 1 dot 2 dot d plus 1 dot 1 dot e plus 1 dot 2 dot f 1 dot 1 dot g plus 1 dot 2 dot h plus 1 dot 2 dot i should be equal to 0 right so this means if i'm taking a as negative so i have created minus 2 here and then i have to take two positives to cancel this right and similarly i have to cancel all of them together so that half of them are positive and half of them are negative right so that would mean that okay let us take a as negative if i take a as negative then my b so because it is 16 the overall sum is 16 so i should have at least eight negatives eight positives right so let's uh, see that how does it come so 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 so if i do this you see that i have deliberately chosen a c d and f as negatives so that gives me 2 2 2 2 uh, negatives and then 1 1 1 1 plus 2 plus 2 so 8 positives and 8 negatives giving rise to zero overall zero so we have to consider all such solutions where total of four terms are positive and four terms are negative or total of plus eight is coming and minus eight is coming and if i keep doing that i can find all the solutions right because this is the orthogonality condition which will follow so let us uh, write down the solution so i'm just now going to write down all the solutions i'll just read out from my notes okay so we have one one minus one minus one so i take two twos as negative then you have one one and one over here and minus one minus one right so this gives me tau1 dot tau2 equal to 0. This satisfies that condition and also it satisfies the summation over all r. The sum of squares will give you 16, right? So it both the conditions it has to satisfy, it does satisfy that. Also, each of this should follow the orthogonality condition. So if tau2 is orthogonal to tau1, it should also follow that tau2 dot tau3 is also equal to 0, tau2 dot tau4 is also equal to 0 and so on. So that means as we keep on solving, we increase our chances of solving to a perfect number. So that means less of hit and trial as we move forward, right? So for example, now for tau3, we will have three conditions. One condition comes from here and two more conditions will come tau1 dot tau3 equal to 0 tau2 dot tau3 equal to 0 right so both these conditions you can form the equation the equation is now simple as we have seen and we can i'll just read out the answers directly so you have 
minus 1. The concept is same. So I'm not going to do all the calculation, otherwise it will take forever to just show the calculations, which is now trivial because we have already seen that. Minus 1, then you have 1 and 1 and minus 1. Okay. So again, what I have done here is I have taken negatives in front of those symmetry operations where the class sizes are 2, right? So here 2, here 2, here 2, and here 2, right? But I also have to take care that. So using this tau1 dot tau3 will be equal to 0, but I also have to see if tau2 dot tau3 is equal to 0 or not. So we should be, whenever we are writing next IR representation, we should always be testing whether it satisfies all the conditions or not. So let's see if uh, this satisfies tau2 dot tau3 equal to 0 because I have not used it, right? So 1 minus 2 plus 1. So let's just quickly write down. So 1 minus 2 plus 1 minus 2 plus 2 plus 1 minus 2 plus 1. We have minus 2. We have plus 2. So we have two, two, two. So four twos are negative and rest are positive. So that means this will be zero. So it does satisfy tau one dot tau three, which we have used, and we have tested now that tau two tau tau three is also equal to zero, right? So using the same principle, let us keep on writing for tau four. So tau four will now be. So I'm not doing this calculation again. I'll just read out from my notes, which I've done before. So this is one minus one, one minus one, one. Okay. Now for power five, again this will be one, 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 one. Up to here, and then we have all of them as negatives here. So at each point, I'm not doing it explicitly, but when I'm writing tau five, that means I also tested it for all four above. That product of tau five to tau four will be equal to zero. Tau five to tau three equal to zero tau 5 to tau 2 equal to 0. So all these are orthogonal to each other. So I should be testing each and every IR representation whether it is following the orthogonality condition or not. Even if one of them is not followed, that means your IR representation is not correct. Okay. So you have to make sure that your IR representation, whatever you are writing, it should follow all the rules of uh, GOT. So, okay, let's write down for tau 6. First three are positive, then you have negatives up to, and then you have two positives up to tau 7. Tau 7 will be from minus 1. So 1, 1. Minus one, minus one. Okay, just one mistake can actually do the whole calculation. And then, okay, the last one D representation is tau eight, which is one minus one, one minus one, one minus one. 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, okay. And for 2D, again, using the same rules, you can find out uh, the characters for 2D also. So you have 2, 0, minus 2, 0, 0, 
टू जीरो माइनस टू जीरो ओके एंड फॉर दिस वन टू जीरो माइनस टू जीरो जीरो माइनस टू जीरो टू जीरो जीरो सो यू मस्ट ऑल्सो अप्रिशिएट द फैक्ट दैट ऑल द इरिड्यूसिबल रिप्रेजेंटेशन आर यूनिकली डिफाइंड बाय डिफरेंट कैरेक्टर्स so none of these two will have same characters at all places right so there would be some difference so that they are uniquely defined okay so now that we have written all 10 representations let us try to find out the mulligan symbols corresponding to each of these okay so let me just uh, copy this page okay so so that i can rub this off so the mulligan symbol let's try to work out the mulligan symbol so the 1d representations as we have learned earlier so 1d representations have to be either a or b now between a and b it will be a if it is plus or symmetric with respect to principal axis which is c4 here otherwise it will be b right so i can say that this will be a this will be a because it is plus 1 under c4 this two will be b again i will have two a's here and two b's here and then i have two two dimensional representation which will be e right now uh, doing this so we have to go one more step forward because it does not differentiate between tau1 and tau2 tau3 and tau4 and so on right so both of them are still a both of them are still b so we have to uniquely define the mulligan symbol for each of this so now if we go to second part the second step second step will be if it is positive under the perpendicular c2 axis or negative or symmetric under the perpendicular c2 axis or negative under the perpendicular c2 axis right okay and if there is no perpendicular c2 axis we do have a perpendicular c2 axis so if there is no perpendicular c2 axis then we have to go to sigma v okay also we can take symmetry under inversion which is which will give me a subscript of g or u so let us write down so these all four are positive so i can write g here g here g g and these are all negative so negative under i so this will be u u u u and this will be g and q okay but it still does not differentiate between a g and a g a u and a u b g and b g b u and b u and so on right okay now so to differentiate between a g and a g i can see that this one is having positive character under perpendicular c2 this one is having negative character under perpendicular c2 that means i can say that this one is 1 this one is 2 similarly this is positive this is negative so i can say 1 2 again it is positive negative so i can say 1 2 again this is positive negative so this will be 1 and 2 right so eg and eu are already defined so there is no need to further give any symbol because this is already uniquely defined right okay so that gives me the mulligan symbols for all of this now let us also try to work out the basis sets because it is still not complete character table so let's try to work out the basis set so unit vector transformations that we have to take r x y z and r x r y r z okay so this is a square planar molecule oriented where the uh, 
molecular plane is lying along x y axis so z axis is not going to be mixed with x y for sure whereas uh, because it has a c4 axis so x and y are going to be mixed because we already have seen that there is a 2d representation that means x and y are going to be mixed so let us uh, work out the symbol for z first and then uh, we'll do it for x y okay so let us see which one will give you z okay so z let's say so character for tau z we'll see which one of them is corresponding to z so under e it will be plus one under c4 it will be plus one under c2 z does not change okay c2 prime z does change to negative because c2 is the perpendicular c2 right so plus z goes to minus z again c2 double prime plus z goes to minus z i it does go to minus one then we have s4 so s4 again z goes to minus one sigma h sigma h is the molecular plane so again z goes to minus one right so we have sigma v z is positive sigma d z is positive so this tells me so if i now match uh, these characters with one of these characters i see that this matches nicely with a to u right so tau z and a to u are same so that means i can write very safely here that z is forming the basis for a to u now similarly let's do it for rz okay so tau rz so what will be for tau rz so tau rz e will be one c4 principal axis the character for z and rz will remain same so that will be one 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 and then for c2 prime again it's uh, rotation so character will be same so you have minus one minus one so for i it should be now plus one we have seen the thumb rules for s4 again it will be plus one because for z it takes the opposite character under s for sigma h this is sigma x y so in that case z will go to plus one r z will go to plus one right then you have sigma v so sigma v is sigma basically it is containing the z axis so that means this will be minus one this will be minus one so this tells me that this is the representation for a to g okay so i can say r z is forming the basis here now this is done now for x y and r x r so x y will clearly be either e g or e u and similarly r x r y will also be one of those e g or e u so let us try to look for which one is forming for so x and y together let's say if we take so let me again go to next page so now let's try to write for tau x y so for e x remains at x y remains at i y so that means i will get trace as 2 for c4 x goes to y y goes to minus x that means it will be 0 0 both of them will be 0 because x is so suppose if x goes to minus x then it for x it will be a minus 1 trace and for y it will be minus 1 but in this case x goes to y because it's a c4 and y goes to minus x okay so both of them will contribute nothing to diagonal and that will be 0 now for c2 for c2 it will be let's say if i do a c2 operation here c2 on x y x goes to minus x y goes to minus y right so that means both of them are at giving minus one minus one 
so this will be minus 2 over here so that still does not differentiate between eg and eu because uh, so far we have seen 2 0 minus 2 2 0 minus 2 and then here also it is 2 0 minus 2 actually we should directly see for i because i and sigma h are the only one which are differentiating between the two so let us see the character under i so i if it is applied to x y what happens so x goes to minus x y goes to minus y so it should be minus 2 right so minus 2 meaning this one that means i can already see that eu will be the representation based on characters under i right so eu will be the representation where xy together will be the basis now similarly if i do it for tau rx ry the only difference is with i or sigma h so we can directly see that so if i do i rx ry what i get is rx ry so remember the thumb rules the rotation vectors do not change their signs under inversion so that means this will be plus 2 so rx and ry will form the basis of this okay now that is done so that means we have almost completely written this the only thing which is left is now the binary products which i leave it for home assignments so try to work it out yourself that what will be the basis for different binary products so you can take example of d orbitals as we have discussed earlier and see for yourself that what d orbitals will form basis for which of these representations and that will go into next column so over here okay so now we have seen clearly that how to write so starting from the molecule how to list down all the symmetry elements symmetry operations find out the point group and then number of classes order of the group and so on and so forth and then using all of this write down a character table complete character table from scratch corresponding molecular symbols for each ir representation find out the unit vector transformation as the basis for different representations right okay so that finishes uh, great orthogonality theorem discussion with an example now so in the next class we'll be looking at uh, cyclic groups and how to write representations for cyclic groups thank you very much mm -hmm.